This is LSU Recon, the latest intelligence on the next Fighting Tiger opponent. Now, with the very latest from behind enemy lines, here's your host, the voice of your Fighting Tigers, Chris Blair. We are back for week number two, LSU Recon. That's right, that's where we embed ourselves with the enemy to figure out what the Tigers can get ready for. Coming up this Saturday, it is the home opener at Tiger Stadium. Kickoff uh, thereabouts at 7 o'clock. A little different. Going to be available by streaming only. SEC Network Plus. If you uh, happen to be an LSU fan and uh, your cable company or online company, streaming company, doesn't have the SEC Network, never fear. You can watch it on ESPN Plus. But we like to market it as SEC Network Plus. So, uh and we hope there's a bunch of people in the stadium, actually, for the game. That would actually uh, be great after uh, we got full capacity for the first time in what seems to be forever. So the Tigers coming off a tough loss last week on the road to UCLA. Um, not a whole lot of time to, to feel sorry for themselves. Had to get back to work. A lot of things to correct coming into uh, week number two. Coach Ed Ogeron yesterday, of course, with his weekly press conference, you know, talked about how, port- how important it was. Uh, to be back home, uh, really focus in on what LSU has to do as a team and, and hopefully get back to their winning ways, build a little confidence, uh, especially for some of the younger players that, uh, you know, you got some veterans out there, but you got some younger players that certainly need to build some confidence uh, as well. They'll have an opportunity to do that against McNeese State coming up this Saturday. So uh, we thought we'd go behind enemy lines, and this one's a little different. Because our guest this week is covering McNeese State. Uh, that's what he does with his job. But I got a feeling there's still a little bit of love for the LSU Tigers because, well, he's an alum. So uh, please welcome from KPLC, LSU alum, and uh, currently covering the, the Cowboys in his daily job. Uh, we've got Zach Nunez joining us. Zach, how are you, my friend? Thanks for having me. It's really an honor to be on your show. I'm very excited. Not just excited to be here, but and excited for this weekend. It's, it's going to be a very, uh, very cool moment for me. You know, I've, I've, you know, come to really enjoy watching the Cowboys over the past few months that I've been in Lake Charles, and I've always loved, always loved the Tigers, and always will love the Tigers. So it's, it's going to be a really, uh, really fun weekend for me. Well, you know, I thought that's why it would be interesting to have you on here because, again, your job now is is covering the program, Coach Frank Wilson, reporting on them multiple times daily, certainly throughout the week, uh, but also understanding what it means being an LSU fan and following the program here during your undergraduate days, um, you, you kind of have a good insight, I think, because you know what LSU is going to be doing, what they're trying to do, how they're trying to improve, but you also get the standpoint of really what's, what's the mindset of the Cowboys coming into legendary Tiger Stadium uh, and trying to, to shock the college football world. It's happened before, but it is an awfully tall task. Yeah, it, it really is. And, you know, I honestly kind of look at the two programs right now, and their week ones kind of are very similar. They kind of got let down by who they both viewed as I – w- I won't say McNeese viewed West Florida as a, a lesser opponent, but really teams that they really should have beat. Um, and, you know, West Florida being a Division two team, it kind of was a letdown to see McNeese lose to them. But really, you go back and look. I mean, that West Florida program has been around since since 2016. And, you know, since then they've been to two national championships and won one of them. So, I mean, really, they really probably could compete with a lot of FCF teams. And I think McNeese kind of really saw that firsthand on Saturday. And then on LSU's side, I mean, you know, UCLA came to play. And I think they kind of got surprised by how well they executed and how well they game planned for the Tigers. You know, you mentioned uh, West Florida coming off a Division II title, a relatively new program in Division II, the Argonauts, one of the more unique names uh, in college sports. But, you know, you look at the game, and I got a, a couple of highlights that we were able to look at between the Cowboys and the Argos, and, and it was just a flat shootout. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of running to be done. Uh, McNeese tried it a little bit more. I think they closed in close to 100 yards. Um, but West Florida was just slinging the football around. And, of course, one of the storylines coming into the game this weekend, the fact that it's uh, Ed Orgeron taking on Cody Orgeron, uh, the quarterback for the Cowboys. But it looked like 
kind of the preview coming into this year was Cody Ogeron has played well, very well, not only throwing the football, but even rushing the football for the Cowboys offense. Just looked like there wasn't enough help elsewhere on the team, and they just came up short by that final score, I believe, what, 42-36 in, in what looked to be just up and down the field. Yeah, we always knew Cody could run. I mean, he was a tennis player, you know, kind of like Drew Brees was. Drew Brees played a little bit of shortstop. Drew Brees played a little bit of tennis, I'm sure, uh, I'm pretty sure, when he was younger. Um, so we knew Cody could move. We knew he could run the ball. But really, Cody has really emerged as a, as a much better passer since really midway through the spring season. I think that uh, it was either the third or fourth week of the season against Lamar. He really only threw for 72 yards. And since then, he's, you know, been – over 300, well over 300, or almost at uh, 300. I think the least amount of yards he's had since then was like 290 against Sam Houston, who went on to win the FCS uh, National Championship. So he's really improved so much, really just since the middle of last season. And I think he really is going to shock some some of the LSU fans who really haven't had the opportunity to see him play so far. Zach Nunez joining us, our guest this week on LSU Recon. You can check him out daily, weekly on KPLC in Lake Charles, and uh, follow him on Twitter at Zach Nunez TV. That pretty much says it all. Um, you know, one of the things, speaking of Cody Ogeron, we'll dig in a little deeper on the offense for Frank Wilson. Uh, I believe it's some. It's a pretty impressive stat, the number of completions, uh, number of quarters played now for Cody without throwing an interception. I mean, it looks like he's making very good decisions when he does decide to let the ball go. Yeah, he really is. I think uh, what McNeese has him at right now is at 91 straight completions without an interception, which is crazy to think about just because of how far he's come. Um, I think he, he's approaching the record. I want to say he's like 30 away from breaking the record or close to that. Um, and really, uh, it's just a testament to how hard he's, he's worked over the past few years. I mean, Coach O talked about it yesterday. He's always been a, a hard worker. Um, you know, he started off as the six string guy, like he talked about. And, you know, now he's been the starter for the past few years and, and really the leader of this, this, this offense. You know, Zach, last year, everybody was kind of dealing with COVID, uh, you know, LSU and the SEC decided to go to 10 games, all SEC schedule, the PAC 12 late to the party, uh, the big 10 late to the party. Um, and, and I don't know if there's a team out there. Uh, I'm sure that somebody will send me a tweet, but. I, I, nobody had a rougher year, put it that way, uh, than the McNeese State Cowboys. I mean, number one, they were dealing with COVID like everybody else. FCS was scrapped. They moved that to the spring. But then you get two devastating hurricanes come in right at Lake Charles, devastating the city, uh, the campus, the stadiums, uh, all of the athletic facilities. And then you got to kind of got to get you got to get all that put back together to even be ready to play a spring season. Uh, which I know was a struggle for him. And, and, and to me, uh, the resilience from, you know, first of all, the people of Lake Charles, but, but secondly, uh, the athletic department and the university at McNeese State has been nothing short of remarkable. What was it like this spring for them? Uh, just how, how did they rebound and how did they at attack and approach, you know, getting a chance to play but having to overcome quite a bit? Yeah, it, it's really been a tough time for the entire community. I mean, you I, when I first got here in March, I mean, I could still see, like, this area was still very, very, very battered and very hurt. Um, but McNeese, and not just McNeese football, McNe all of McNeese athletics has really been a rallying point for this entire community. I mean, just looking at the baseball team, the way they, you know, won the Southland Conference Tournament last year and the whole area rallied around them. They, you know, had T-shirts printed and everything saying fur to city and everything like that. Um, and really, you know, I kind of look back at that first game where football played against uh, Tarleton State. And um, really, it was, it was another shootout as well. And that Cody played really well in that game as well. Um, but it, it, they took it into overtime. And, and really, that that game, to come back from the deficit they were down, it, it really embodied the mentality that the entire community has taken on since the Hurricanes and everything like that is, you know, we're going to come back. We're going to be as good as we once were. Um, and I think that that's – really the message that the football team sent last year, and it, it's really inspired the community as well. Let's talk about some X's and O's. And, you know, if you look at, in a vacuum, the game against West Florida last week, you would think, as I said earlier, that this is just a, a slinging up and down the field style offense. 
in your opinion, is that because that's what the game dictated? Because when I think of Coach Frank Wilson, I think of a guy, number one, that wants to be balanced offensively. Number two, certainly pays very close attention to the running game. Was it just one of those deals where today it's going to take throwing the football, or is this kind of the M.O. Uh, for this Cowboys squad here in 2021? You're right, and and that that is really what Frank wants to do. He's, he wants to be balanced. But being the the former running backs coach for uh, for LSU when he was with the Tigers, um, he does have that emphasis on the run games. And then McNeese has a very good stable of running backs. They have Steph Hutterson, who's a two lane transfer. Um, really was I think he was the second team, uh, in the first team or second team all conference in the AAC this past season in 2020. Um, you know yet man who can really you know tote the rock as well and they got carlos williams who's had some injury troubles at times but is really a solid runner as well um so they do have that emphasis on running the ball but they're not afraid to throw the ball at all especially with the emergence of cody um but i think you know their offense is reliant upon the run game and they kind of just got behind the eight ball against west florida and felt like they had to play a little bit of catch up once uh once west florida kind of took that lead i've had a couple of experiences over the years uh in my time at georgia southern for these type games, FCS, before Southern moved up to uh, FBS. But when they were an FCS school, you'd get those games uh, against Florida, against Clemson. Uh, and, and there was always this thought that, well, you want your best defense is keeping your offense out there and, and letting that clock run and not giving all of those powerful weapons for the opponent opportunities to make big plays and put a ton of points on the board. Give yourself a chance late in the fourth quarter to be in the game. In this matchup, do you get a sense, Coach Wilson, again, knowing Coach Ed Ogeron for over 25 years, they're close friends, everybody knows that. Uh, He also knows, Coach Wilson, that that Ed O, as a father, wants to watch his son play and and thankfully because of this past spring had the opportunity to do so. So he's pretty familiar, more so than most, uh, you know, Power 5 schools taking on an FCS school. But do you get the sense that, that McNeese State is planning a game plan for the LSU game are they going to come in and hey this is what we do we're just going to see if we can do it and and be successful against arguably and and decisively a a more talented and deeper team yeah absolutely and and you're talented deeper everything like that absolutely Um, but I think you know McNeese has always been one of those FCS schools who do take the game to FBS teams you know they're not afraid to back down from those more talented, bigger teams. I mean, they played Nebraska a few years ago and really gave them a little bit of a challenge. I'm pretty sure they played UCF a few years ago as well and, and did the same thing. So I, I, McNeese really isn't going to kind of roll over. They're looking to go out and they're looking to win this game and they're looking to actually, you know, prove a point and send a message. I mean, will they actually be able to win? I, I can't necessarily, you know, I wouldn't bet my house on it. But, I mean, you know, they, they think they actually have a shot to, to go out and, and give LSU a challenge. Let's talk defensively um, for McNeese State. Again, last week gave up a ton of points, uh, the overwhelming majority of that through the air. Last week for LSU and the losing effort, um, the running game virtually non-existent, 49 yards of rushing. There were issues with the offensive line, um, unable to establish the run. And you, you, you look at it on paper and you say, okay, well, if LSU wants to throw the football with Max Johnson, even if Garrett Nussmeyer gets an opportunity to play at quarterback, and then the talented receiving core that LSU has, wow, McNeese could be in for a long afternoon because they could literally light up the scoreboard and the stat sheet. Um, Defensively, a couple of guys that we should watch for, leaders for McNeese State on defense, and and what's kind of their M.O.? Uh, If you describe a a McNeese State defense, what's the style we're going to see? Uh, McNeese is going to run a 4-2-5, uh, and, and really some of the guys that you should really look out for are, are oddly enough, it's going to be, you know, where LSU is going to have the most challenge this week with having two offensive tackles out is uh, the defensive ends, Isaiah Chambers and Mason Kinsey. I mean, they've been kind of, kind of a two-man wrecking crew this past spring. Isaiah Chambers uh, finished fourth in the Buck Buchanan Award, which is goes to the, uh, the best FCS defensive player in the, in this, uh, in the league uh and Mason Kinsey really has kind of been his sidekick through the whole thing. Isaiah Chambers really had a slow start to the spring season, but finished with uh, seven and a half tackles, which was second in the entire uh, entirety of the FCS. And he really didn't have his first full sack until week three or four. So he kind of turned it on once he got it going. Um, and he's got SEC size. 
He's like he's 6'5", 265 ish, I want to say. Um, so he can really play with with the best of them. He, he's got good size. He was a four star coming out of high school. Um, he initially uh, signed with TCU, got redshirted, then went over to the University of Houston, and now has landed with McNeese. And he's really somebody to look out for, especially with LSU having two tackles out. Um, and then in the secondary, Andre Sam. Andre Sam is uh, the free safety. He's really probably the main leader in that secondary. Um, can kind of do it all. Great coverage guy, great team leader, and he, he's really somebody to look out for. Now, do I, can I – and the entire secondary really is, is pretty solid. If I had to pick out a weakness for the McDee's defense, it would probably be the linebackers. Um, but, you know, am I going to say that they're going to lock down guys like Kayshawn Boutte and Trey Palmer all game? Absolutely not. But, I mean, I think they'll give them more of a challenge than they're expecting. All right, again, when you get this type of matchup and you're McNeese State and you're Coach Frank Wilson, some coaches will say, all right, got to have a couple of things in the gadget bag. Uh, and maybe we pull them early uh, just to kind of stun mighty LSU. Uh, from your experience around the coach, uh, not giving away game plan from practice, but your experience, is, is that a possibility? Are they going to try to throw a few wrinkles because, as I said, you know, obviously LSU, the head coach, knows quite a bit about uh, their overall tendencies. What do you expect them to do when you know, they're playing with house money when they come over here on Saturday night? Right. Uh, I really do think, you know, them to throw the whole the whole toolbox at them. I mean, I think they're going to try and pull every trick in the book that they have just, you know, to be competitive. And I think one of those things is uh, quarterback turned wide receiver Walker Wood. And now Coach O will definitely know about Walker coming from watching all the spring games this past season. Um, but Walker was a, uh, a quarterback who could admitted to the University of Kentucky from the Kentucky area and found his way to McNeese and was kind of the backup for most of last season. Um, and he kind of played a little bit of a Taysom Hill role for the Cowboys last year to where, you know, he would get those goal line snaps and, and take them in when, when he needed to and when he was called on. Um, and now kind of switching to wide receiver, he actually led the team in receiving yards this past week with 98. So he's a guy who can kind of do it all, and I, I would not be shocked to see them kind of pull out a little few tricks with Walker Wood. Um, and then, really, I expect McNeese to kind of go for two a couple times uh, this weekend because they've had some kicking troubles over the past uh, over the past game or so, and I think uh, they really, you know, did – see some success going for two and they also uh went six for six on fourth down this past weekend so that you could have some some interesting play calls on fourth down as well last thing i got on the x's and o's in today's college game defenses are trying to come up with every way imaginable to slow down these uh you know these high-powered offenses um you know there's been such an emphasis uh coming off the ucla loss uh on the defensive side especially getting pressure and disrupting things uh, in the offensive backfield. Obviously, it didn't work too well last week, especially in the second half, but, but I got to believe that's an emphasis this week. So, uh, as Coach O kind of joked yesterday, he said, Cody knows we're coming after him. Uh, you know, as soon as he gets ready to snap that football, the Tigers have pinned their ears back. Is this the type of offense? Is Cody the type of quarterback who has the ability uh, to release the ball quickly? Because for me, I think that's going to be critical for them having any success, especially in the passing game. Yeah, that that McNeese offensive line has seen a few injuries as well. Uh, so that that's going to be a tough challenge for him to get the ball out that quick. But I really think he, he can get it done. You know, I look at some of the some of the film from West Florida rewatching it last night. Um, you know, he really did was able to move his feet or get the ball out quick and find space, find time. So even if he's not going to get the time from his offensive line, he's going to use his feet. He's going to find the time himself, and he's going to get the ball out as best as he can. Before I let you go, I guess uh, LSU fans want to know, you're going to be uh, taking in the game, reporting uh, as you do and do well for KPLL, KPLC and Lake Charles. But you're an LSU alum. Uh, and, you know, nobody's going to watch this but LSU fans. Everybody knows you're a big <laughs> LSU Tiger fan. So are you going to dress neutral, uh, or is there going to be any purple and gold uh, when you when you arrive on Saturday? That's what I was trying to figure out. I mean, the couple of the work, work polos I have to wear to report, there, two of them are blue. So I, if I wear those, it looks like I'm going for McNeese, but then the other one I have is red, and that's neutral, but it's UL Lafayette colors and – 
yeah, I don't really want to go there. So I don't know. I'm I'm gonna have to figure out. It's between the blue shirt and the red shirt, and it's just a hard decision. Oh wow! All right. Well, I will certainly be looking for you to see uh, <laughs> what the final decision was for the ro- wardrobe on Saturday night. Zach, it's been a pleasure. Uh, congratulations on all your success. Congratulations uh, on your graduation, and now working in the real world on television there at KPLC. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on uh, Saturday back here at Tiger Stadium. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's an honor. It's a real honor to get to talk to you. All right. Zach Nunez, KPLC in Lake Charles. Fans over there, make sure you want to get your sports. Oh, he's the guy to go to. That'll wrap up this week's edition of LSU Recon, all brought to you by Cards and Culture. Yep. Former Tiger baseball pitcher Anthony Renato, former major leaguer. He knows his stuff when it comes to collectibles. So if you haven't stopped by at their location on Perkins Row, I have. and It's impressive. So go by and see them. We'll be back next week for another edition of LSU Recon. I thank you, Zach Nunez. Thank you for stopping by. And we'll see you next time. Go Tigers. LSU Recon is a production of LSU SP and Playfly Sports. Hit the subscribe button now and never miss a new episode. You can follow Chris at LSU Tigers Voice.